I'm going to plant dahlia tubers this morning and uh, it's a lovely job for a March or April morning. So here I've got one that we stored from last year and this is how we store our dahlias through the winter. So most of them we don't lift actually, we leave them in the garden, but the ones in pots have to get lifted and they get put into crates covered with hessian, like that. I'm using a peat-free compost and you want to get a pot that holds it sort of, not, not cramming it in, but holds it quite tight so that you don't waste space basically. And then the only thing that people get confused by is how deep to plant it. Um, and you just want to do it just below the soil surface so it could not be easier. That's it. Dahlia tuber planted, labelled, and then this will go somewhere frost free but light. Um, with us we put it in the polytunnel on the heated bed. But if you don't have one, just put it on a window ledge and just water it every few days but not too much. So that's that done. Uh, there, here are some that we actually planted a month ago and so they're starting to shoot and I just want to show you how to do uh, a cutting from a dahlia which is a very very easy and positive thing to do because you can easily turn a tuber like that um, into double the number, no triple the number of plants or more so from there that will be planted out but I can take cuttings from it in a month just like we've got here this is a dahlia called Emery Paul, which is a real whopper. And because it's a whopper, I don't want too many shoots left on the tuber because it puts too much strain on it and you'll actually not get so much flower and more leaf. And so for Emery Paul, I actually only want it to form three main stems. With most varieties, with smaller, well, medium size, I might go for five. And for small heads, I might go for seven. Um, but for Emery Paul, I just want three. And always with taking a cutting, you want to try and get a bit of tuber or stem with your cutting. And so, for instance, here, I'm just going to try and nick into a little bit. So I've got a bit of harder material, do you see, like that, below the cutting. So that's step one. Step two is pinching out the tip. Now what that does is it removes apical dominance and then the plant puts energy into forming roots, not growing up and forming shoots and flowers. So you do that as the next thing. And then any, any leaf that would be below the compost, you remove with a knife or a pair of scissors because otherwise that will rot. And then the final thing, which I always find rather weird, but particularly with emery pool, which has whopper leaves, I'm actually going to cut those in half because they've got to photosynthesize and transpire and this shoot has got to suck up enough water for it to do that. And by reducing the leaf surface area, I improve the chances of it rooting rather than flopping. That then goes round the outside of a pot and I tend to use black pots for this because they absorb heat of course like a black car you always know that when you're on holiday and that goes right the way around the edge and then what happens rather than putting it in the middle is it'll hit the plastic sooner than if it was in the middle and it'll absorb the warmth so it'll then the root will come out the bottom hit the plastic and break and you then get lots of lateral rootlet formation so you get a for a rooted cutting forming more quickly so I've got another one here so again, that goes around the outside. And then I'm going to leave those three cuttings on the plant. But if it forms more, which it probably will, I'll go back in a week or two's time and take them and put them into this pot. So then all I need to do is label and water. So I'll come back to these in three weeks and show you what to do with them once they've rooted. Great. <laughs>